It's time for Hands on Mac. Hello, everybody. I'm Leo Laporte, and today I'm going to show you probably the single most useful tool for command line users on the Macintosh. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remote, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by Hover. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Time for Hands on Mac. I love the Macintosh for so many reasons, but one of the primary reasons is the Mac command line. Now, you may remember earlier episodes, I showed you my favorite terminal program, iTerm, and I show you a few simple terminal commands. Now we're going to really dive in deep. So I'm going to assume you've got your terminal set up, and I'm going to assume you've installed this. This is something called Homebrew. It is a package manager for the Macintosh that allows you to install Unix command utilities, even gr uh, graphical uh, utilities, even with the help of an additional program, uh, apps from the Mac App Store. It's kind of all in one. And if you like typing, I think you're going to really appreciate having access to Homebrew. So start off by installing Homebrew if you haven't done so already. This is the page. It's an open source project at brew.sh. I should mention there are other package managers for the Macintosh. There's at least nine I've counted. I first started using something called Fink many moons ago. There's Mac ports. So the relatively new Nix. But by far the best supported and the I think the most loved is homebrew. And maybe it's because its icon is a stein of frothy beer. In fact, you even get a frothy beer stein when you correctly, uh, successfully install something on homebrew. Begin by opening your terminal and entering this command. This is from the homebrew website, brew.sh. Now, a word of caution. Anytime you see a command like this, beware. What this command is going to do is it's going to use the command utility bash and a program called curl to download from github uh, an installer called install.sh and then run it <laughs> you really don't want to run random installer programs you've downloaded on the internet in this case it's safe to do so because it's Brew. It's Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager. If you've used Linux, you're used to the idea of a package manager. It's a tool that installs other tools. And once you've installed Homebrew on your uh, terminal, there are a lot of different commands you can use. So the first thing uh, you do once you install Brew is to do Brew Update. I'll type it in right down here. In fact, let's zoom in on my command line so you can see what I'm typing. Notice, because I use a, a terminal program called Fish, it has auto-completion. As soon as I type BRE, it said, you mean brew update? And I said, yeah. So I'm going to run that. This runs silently in the background and downloads all the latest versions of all the thousands of programs brew can install. So it may take a minute or two. We'll speed it up right here. And these are all, here's a list of all the uh, brew casks that have been updated since I last did an update. Here's all the brew formulae that are updated. Let me explain the difference between a formula and a cask. A formula is a text script that will run and build a variety of tools. These are all the different tools you can install with Brew. You see the ones at the beginning with check marks? Those are ones that I've already installed. These are ones I'm running on this uh, particular Macintosh. And these are all unchecked the ones I could continue or I could install right now. There's also formula that are no longer in there. Apparently, Brew will no longer let you install COBOL. And then casks are basically binary files, just like the kinds of files you would download and install from other places. And these are all the updated casks. Now, notice that there were a few Brew tools that I have installed that need updating. So I'm going to update them. This is one of the reasons you install Brew, because anytime you install something with Brew, you can also update it with Brew using the Brew upgrade command. That's going to upgrade all the currently installed files. And I'll let you watch this, because you'll see all the noise Brew makes. It's downloading 
in some cases, a binary file which it'll install. In some cases, a script which will run. And sometimes it'll even build the files from the original source code. That what that takes the longest. But you can walk away and let this run in the background as it's downloading all the updates here. So we're going to, and these we want to do, for instance, updating OpenSSL. We're updating Sphinx, which is a browser, or a, rather a, an engine that uh, um, lets you create web pages, uh, I think. I don't know why I have it installed. One of the things that happens with any uh, Linux commands or Unix commands, or in this case BSD commands, is they often require other libraries, and we call them dependencies. Brew will handle the dependencies and automatically download those. So while I probably didn't install Qt uh, explicitly in my Brew installation, I probably do have a program Brew uh, brood that uses Qt. Qt is a graphical user interface. And so it's likely that I'm updating that now from 15, I'm sorry, from 5.14.1 to 0.2 because some program I'm using also has it. It's also deleting the old file, as you can see, removing 15, 5.14.1. We'll, we'll go through, let's speed this up because this is going to take a little while. I probably every week or so We'll do a brew upgrade and upgrade all my installed uh, brew files. That's one thing a package manager does that's very nice. It lets you automatically update these files, which would you would normally have to update manually. Um, I'll show you how you can install uh, GUIs as well, files like uh, Firefox or Chrome directly from brew using the cask command. So as soon as this is done, and we're done. We see the command prompt. In my case, it's that little dollar sign there saying we've done everything. That's brew upgrade. And to install something, you use brew install. So let's uh, type a brew install command. We're going to install something called htop, a command line utility a lot of people on Linux and other places uh, use to keep track of processors uh, and uh, memory and what what routines are running in the background. You see it has a dependency, a library it needs called ncurses. This is a text-based program that runs uh, on a, a text uh, screen like your terminal, and as a result, it needs ncurses to run. Now that I've installed it, and you can see it says I've installed it, uh, I also need to run it with uh, the sudo command we talked about earlier. So let's uh, let's run it and see what htop does. S U D O H T O P. It's going to ask for my password because I'm running this as root. And now I can see <laughs> this is kind of cool. I mean, it's not graphical, but it is sort of graphical. It's a text-based graphical demonstration. These are the four processors. Actually, there's eight because of hyperthreading that are running. How many tasks are running? These are the tasks names. Now, I like HTOP, but there's an even better program to run. So I'll show you how I'd install that called Glances. I think I might already have that installed. Let's see. Glances is a fancy version or a little fancier version of HTOP. The point is we have now hundreds, maybe even thousands, yep, already installed, uh, of um, useful tools that I can install, especially if you're used to using Unix computers. You'll be glad to see all of the old friends like wget and curl, updated versions of Python and Perl. There's glances giving us kind of the same information, but it may be in a little bit prettier graphical interface. I can see what programs are running in the background. I can see how many cycles they're using. It's kind of a handy little tool. There's a lot of tools like this, and if you're using the command line on uh, your Macintosh, you're going to want to get... Uh, get look at some of these and find them and uh, and as you browse the internet you'll see tips for others you can s install and as I said you can even install uh, stuff from that is graphical like Firefox uh, Python Perl very handy to keep up to date using brew one of the things brew does is it installs these programs uh, locally only and then puts a link in uh, the directory that you're searching for binary files. So it's very easy to uninstall them. It's also easy to keep them from colliding with official Macintosh utilities. You may have noticed when I launch uh, my terminal, uh, I run a little program called NeoFetch and CowSay. Here, we'll, we'll start a new terminal, and you can see what NeoFetch and CowSay do. NeoFetch displays information about my system. CowSay draws a little cow. In this case, it's a kitty cat 
or maybe, I'm sorry, it's an elephant inside an ASCII snake, and a quote. The quote comes from Fortune. Uh, all three of those, NeoFetch, Fortune, and Kause, are command line utilities that are fun. They're available on most Linux boxes. They're available on most Unix boxes, and it's fun to be able to install those on uh, to your um, Macintosh. So that's a few things to do with Brew, but I think as you start using Brew, you'll see more and more. I'm going to show you one more thing you're going to want to install. It's called MASS, M-A-S, or maybe it's MOSS, M-A-S. Yeah, it's probably MOSS. Brew install MOSS. And this is a really handy command line utility for keeping your App Store applications up to date. You see, I've already got it installed. So next week, now that you've installed Brew, I'll show you how you can use Brew to keep your entire Macintosh up to date, including App Store installed and system updates, and how to install a new Mac from scratch using a very handy feature called Brew File. We'll do that all next week on Hands On Mac. I promise you, it might seem at first that Brew is kind of arcane and, and weird, but as you start perusing all the command line utilities you can use with Brew, I think you'll find it's a very good way to make your Mac more powerful and to keep it up to date. Not quite automatically, but almost. Uh, our show today brought to you by our great friends at Hover. That's the place I go whenever I need a new domain name. 400 plus domain extensions, of course, dot, dot, dot com, dot net, dot org, but also dot ninja, dot pizza. If you're an artist, Hover allows you to create a domain to showcase your talent with the extension dot art. Get your creative juices flowing. Let Hover give you the stage. Visit hover.com slash twit for 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit. That's where I register all my domain names. I recommend it highly. All right. We've got brew under our belts. Next week, we're going to show you a little more you can do with brew, including installing brand new systems and keeping your system up to date. I'm Leo Laporte. I'll see you next Friday on Hands on Mac.